Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. Start your day tomorrow with the Daily Dog with Michelle Forto. The morning podcast on Dog Works Radio. Apple podcast reviewer Patty Christensen calls it funny, smart, and filled with all the info I want to know about dogs. I love this show. Wake up with the Daily Dog, available on Dog Works Radio on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your shows. You are listening to The Daily Dog with your host, Michelle Forto. The Daily Dog offers training advice, tips and tricks, and maybe even a book or movie review, too. Hello and welcome, everybody. It's The Daily Dog with Michelle Forto, and it's time to get going on our tips of the day. So today's tip of the day is timing is everything. In dog training, timing is of the essence. Whether you're praising, redirecting a drive, or correcting, the timing involved is of the utmost importance. And just like I mentioned on the show the other day, too much affection can also be a problem. So if you're praising your dog at the wrong time, if you're giving a treat at the wrong time, then the dog is learning that the behavior you're actually wanting isn't what you thought. So for instance, if you told your dog to sit and then you go to get the treat out of your pocket, by the time you hand it to your dog, he's standing again. That's what I'm talking about. Timing is everything. So keep that in mind when you're doing training with your dog. Our next segment is our training segment, and on today's training segment, we are continuing our influential people in dog training. Today, we are talking about B.F. Skinner, Fred Keller, and William Schoenfield. B.F. Skinner lived from 1904 to 1990, continued the work that Thorndike started. He was the leading advocate of a more modern version of Thorndike's Law of Effect which states the frequency of a behavior increases or decreases according to the result it, the behavior, produces. When Skinner was pursuing his doctorate at Harvard University, he discovered that he could methodically change the behavior of lab rats by rewarding them with food. This study proceeded in the following stages. First, the rat was rewarded simply for facing the correct end of the cage. Next... The rat was rewarded only when it stood next to the lever. Later, stages delayed the reward until the rat touched the lever with its body. Eventually, the rat learned it had to press the lever to receive a pellet of food. Skinner's viewpoints were unique in that he felt the proper study of behavior should be limited to observable events of behavior and instead of how the subject might think. He consistently argued against making interpretations based on events that could not be observed. Skinner did not discuss intervening variables such as hunger or thirst when interpreting behavioral learning. In 1938, B.F. Skinner published The Behavior of Organisms. Many consider this milestone work the leading authority on the science of operant conditioning. Today, many dog trainers are using clickers for training canines. Clickers are conditioned reinforcers that have been used by conditioning experts since the 1940s. Skinner wrote about clickers, which he called crickets, in a paper called How to Teach Animals in 1951. While on the faculty of the University of Minnesota, Skinner's study of operant conditioning principles was expanded to include pigeons. He was studying a phenomenon known as extinction when it occurred to him to ask himself, are theories of learning necessary? As previously discussed, Skinner felt the study of behavior should be limited to events that were observable and measurable. Skinner maintained that the science of behavior should should actually deal with behavior in its relation to variables that could be systematically manipulated. Skinner was a leading advocate of expectancy theory. It was his contention that learning theory was in reality nothing more than expectancy. 
He wrote, When we assert that an animal acts in a given way because it expects to receive food or any reinforcers, then what began as the task of accounting for a learned behavior becomes the task of accounting for expectancy. Skinner is also partially credited for moving the science of operant conditioning beyond the lab and towards a viable technology for changing behavior. Fred S. Keller lived from 1899 to 1966, is well known for his work on a teaching method known as Personalized System of Instruction, or PSI. Keller was a classmate and lifelong friend of B.F. Skinner. While it is true that Skinner ultimately wound up on the faculty at Harvard, whereas Keller taught at Columbia, they remained colleagues throughout their lives. In 1947, Fred Keller teamed up with William Schoenfield, who lived from 1915 to 1996 at Columbia University and began to teach the first college psychology course employing Skinner's methods. Undergraduate students taught rats to respond to stimuli in order to obtain reinforcement. Keller and Schoenfield published the first text in the emerging field of operant conditioning in 1950 entitled Principles of Psychology. Tune in next week where I continue our segment about influential people and modern dog training. It's time for the breed of the day. A national political turnover in Holland brought the Keyshound to wide attention in the latter part of the 18th century but the breed had already been a favorite of the Dutch people for several hundred years. Never used as a hunter or for any of the specialized work that has characterized so many other breeds, the very force of the Keyshawn personality won the breed a high place in the affections of a nation. Events leading to the Keyshawn's recognition as the National Dog of Holland were part of the social unrest that seemed to spread like a prairie fire throughout the world in the years immediately preceding the French Revolution. The origin of the Keyshawn type of dog is Arctic, or possibly subarctic, and of the same strains that produce the Samoan, Chow Chow, Norwegian Elk Hound, Finnish Spitz, and Pomeranian. It seems most closely related to the Pomeranian, and some authorities believe that the Pomeranian was produced by selective breeding of the Keyshound. The Keyshound has changed little in the past two centuries, and the earliest descriptions represent it as nearly identical with the dog of today. A well-balanced, handsome dog of medium size with alert carriage and intelligent expression, the Keyshound is a hardy breed with a coat easily cared for by brushing. One of the most affectionate and lovable of all dogs, for centuries they have been bred for ideal family, family companions and sensible watchdogs. General appearance of the Keyshound is a natural, handsome dog of well-balanced, short, coupled body, attracting attention not only by his coloration, art, alert carriage, and intelligent expression, but also by his standoff coat, his richly plumed tail well curled over his back, his fox-like expression, and his small pointed ears. His coat is very thick around the neck fore part of the shoulders and chest, forming a lion-like ruff, more profuse in the male. His rump and hind legs down to the hocks are also thickly coated, forming the characteristic trousers. His head, ears, and lower legs are covered with the thick, short hair. The temperament is of primary importance. The quiche und is neither timid nor aggressive, but instead is outgoing and friendly with both people and other dogs. The quiche und is a lively, intelligent, alert, and affectionate companion. Thanks for listening to The Daily Dog, and if you've experienced the affection of a quiche und, let us know. Tune in next time. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Fordo and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. 
If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com. Hi guys, it's Alex. If you are a fan of Sled Dog Sports and the Iditarod, Mushing Radio is the show for you. Each Wednesday, we drop a new episode on Dog Works Radio. So be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you like our podcast, there are a few things you can do. You can take a couple of minutes and go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. You can also check out all of our DogWorks Radio sponsors and promotions in our show notes. Another thing you can do is go over to Facebook, like our Facebook page, and one last thing, please tell all of your friends by spreading the word about DogWorks Radio. Thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate you. DogWorks Radio is produced by Robert Forto. Logo art by Angry Squirrel Studios. DogWorks Radio is produced in conjunction with KVRF 89.7 in Palmer, Alaska. For dog training advice, you can contact Alaska DogWorks at 907-841-1686 or visit their website at alaskadogworks.com. If you have a show idea or would like to be a guest, please contact us by sending an email to live at dogworksradio.com.